Welcome to the Skull Helmet Chin Guard video. You can see here I've got KC20 from House of Colour, which is a post sanding cleaner. The chin guard is all masked up and ready to go. I used uh, green 3M masking tape to do that. And I've just sprayed on some of that uh, water based post sanding cleaner by House of Colour, just rubbing that on um, with a clean rag and then I'll rub it dry. So it'll just um, evaporate off a little bit anyway. Now I've just switched to methylated spirit, so I'm doing the same, rubbing that on and then rubbing it off again with the rag, just to get that surface nice and clean. Now the reason I'm doing that with this particular thing is that um, it's a rubbery sort of compound, so I want to clean it off and make sure that the methylated spirits evaporates everything. You saw there I've got some um, adhesion promoter just in a pressure pack and now I've got the Gershon uh, blue tack rag. So what I'm going to do now before I spray the adhesion promoter, I'm just going to wipe that chin guard down, get any dust or dirt off it. So I gave it a little bit of time to dry and allow the uh, methylated spirits to evaporate off the surface before I did this. And now that the surface is all clean, I'm just going to spray on some of that adhesion promoter. Now this particular adhesion promoter, like I said, is in a pressure pack as you can see. Just spray it on nice even coats, sort of uh, reasonably wet's fine, just don't get any runs. So you don't need to actually sand, you just spray that on, leave it for 20 minutes. Um, so you have to leave it for at least 20 minutes to dry and then um, you can just airbrush straight on the top of it. Now I always recommend that you do a test panel before using any new products on your project. So yeah, always test it out first, it's always a great idea, especially when you're new using um, new products that you've never used before. Okay, so I've got white Trident water-based airbrush color in my airbrush. I'm using an Iwata CMC Plus Micron and what I'm doing is I've already reduced the paint, um, not overly reduced at this time but I just I still want coverage but um, I do like to thin it a little bit so just a bit of reducer in your gun or mix it up first, pour it in. I actually strained it as well into the, um, the cup so that it flows really nice and I get less tip drying. So what I'm doing is I'm just bringing out those teeth and the nostril area of the skull artwork that we're going to put on this chin guard. So just doing it all freehand. I haven't sketched anything or, um, yeah, I have just a little bit of a reference, but I mean, yeah, just pretty much making it up and, and making that whole skull thing suit the shape of the chin guard. So in this case, I think freehand works better because you know, you, you can really shape it as you go to suit the object that you're painting. So just with that white, much the same as I do in most of my other videos, just building that white up, um, still allowing there to be some darker shading to show me where I'm going to go with the dark areas. So this is pretty much just my, my sketch, just to get everything, you know, in the right area where I want to have it. I'm, I can adjust as I go and you'll see in this in this particular video there's a few things that I painted in and added and so you can um, you can add things and then come back in and sharpen it back up and um, you'll see how I've done that in a few cases. So this is just another a shot just from the um, the other camera just to show you the other side there. So you can see the jawbone pretty much the same process. Just getting all that shape in there of what I want it to look like. So you can add as much detail as well as you like. So obviously you don't have to be so perfect with your, um, your airbrush strokes, especially with the skull type artwork. Um, you can sort of get away with it being a little bit more, I suppose, uneven that can create some really cool effects. So also sometimes I'll use um, 
texture effects templates as well to help get that sort of um, that damaged bone. But for this particular project, because there's quite a bit going on in the actual shape of the uh, chin guard, I didn't really go too much with um, adding you know heaps and heaps of texture. So I did it all freehand, and um, yeah, I was pretty happy with the way it came out. So hopefully you enjoy it. Enjoy watching the video and um, you can see now I'm just building more and more of that white. So pretty self-explanatory. So just uh, get coverage wherever you like. I wanted it to fade out a little bit. So after the jaw, I wanted the background there to be, I didn't mind if a bit of overspray went onto it because I knew I was going to come back in with the darker tone later and sharpen all that back out again. So you can see here, I'm just going back over sections now, like readjusting that nostril area, making it a little bit bigger. I wasn't really happy with the, the first sort of layout of the size. Now I've now that I've got all the white down, what I've done now is I've switched, so cleaned that white out of the airbrush, switched to my um, CMSB Micron, and I'm running black Trident water-based paint this time. Again, thinned it out, so now I'm running with a 0.18 mil needle, whereas the CMC Plus has a 0.23, so I'm just starting to basically shape everything up and um, refine all my edges, start to bring all the shading in, so knocking things back, like darkening them off. Again, with the nostrils, I like to sort of almost lead into the darkness, so towards the front where that, that nostril separation is, it's a bit lighter, and then towards the back, it's always almost solid black. So that'll give it a bit more 3D effect. Just going in and outlining the teeth. So you'll see that the lines aren't 100% perfect. Even though they're not perfect, I wasn't too worried because um, the actual SB must have had a little bit of something stuck in the tip, so it wasn't spraying 100%. Um, but for the purpose of this video, I wasn't too concerned because I knew it was a skull type idea and I thought, well, it's a good way to show you how to clean up and um, make some of these, I suppose, less than perfect lines almost disappear. So you can see here when I get to this one especially, it played up a little bit. But I know that that's going to be in shadow, so... Again, I'm not too concerned. You can see that's a pretty ugly sort of line. Um, but that's fine. It's a good way to learn how to apply shadows to make things look a bit smoother and, and you know, how you come back and you can clean things up. So never just, um, if you are having an issue with, with your airbrush, I mean, it is a good idea to always have it clean and uh, nine times out of ten, mine are always running really well, but I don't know, for whatever reason, this particular time, it did struggle a little bit. So um, I've since obviously given it a good pull apart and clean, and it's working perfectly again. But um, yeah, look, just it's always a good idea to, um, yeah, just go with it. I mean, if it's extremely bad, then I would recommend stopping your artwork. But with a skull type thing, it's not that important. And if and I suppose if you do make a mistake, this is a good way to show you how to clean it up a little bit. So you can see now I'm already starting to, to fix that sort of area. So just bringing in the darker shading in those, in those bits, dropping them out a bit. Adding that shading so that the, the teeth are starting to look 3D. Just running along that jawbone. 
So if you're uncomfortable with doing this with black, because black is fairly harsh, you can also use a few different tones before you go to the, the darkest tone. You could also do this in bone color. For this particular project, we did it more in uh, black and white. You can see I've dusted back over that, that area where the teeth were a bit ugly and it's fixed that up nicely. They're starting to um, totally disappear now and make it look like they're more three-dimensional. Just adding some drop shadows there, some more texture. Just little crevices in the bone. Still adjusting that nostril area, so made it a little bit bigger again. So when you're working freehand, obviously you're constantly looking at it, making sure you're happy. Any things that you want to change, you can come in and, and fix them up as you go. Obviously it works for this particular artwork. It's not going to, you know, it wouldn't work if you're doing a portrait or something like that. You can't just chop and change. Um, so just be wary of that. This is a, a great one to work on because, you know, you really can't make many mistakes. It's it's just a matter of um, coming back in and and um, rectifying an area if you're not happy with it. So you can see now I'm adding white again. So I usually, what I'll do is I'll add the white prior to my final tone because white will always give you a bit of overspray. So that way I can get all my highlights on there now and then the next tone, which will be the final tone of black, I will come back in and I'll really sharpen it all up again. So it'll clean up all that overspray white edge. You can see there I've added a little bit of extra as well, just brightened a section and pulled that back out again because that was sort of disappearing. Just adding some of the shadows and cracks, uh, sorry, the highlights and cracks on that um, jawbone. Working in the nostril area. And now we're switching to the other side, the other camera. So just to show you how I highlighted those bits as well. Sorry that the camera's a bit darker on this side, but still gives you a good look at what's going on. Added a little bit in there as well, just to better work with the shape of the chin guard. So pretty much with the highlights, you, you sort of, um, you're picking out all of the brightest areas, obviously, um, and you, you're refining all your shapes because this is still an opaque color. So, you know, like for instance, in the teeth, if you want more of a closer gap um, and eliminate more of that black, you can literally just go over the top of it. So highlights, on the top there as well. Brighter there, not so bright in that darker area. That's that, that was that ugly tooth and now like you can't even notice now, so it looks perfect. Just dusting your white back over in certain areas to go a bit brighter. I always gradually build as well, don't try and saturate the white, just do numerous coats. Or if you are going to, if you do want to just stay in one area and brighten it up, spray it on, but leave obviously the air on for a little bit before you keep spraying so that it doesn't get a complete wet area where it's, a, you know, a chance to run on you. So you're just sort of gradually building working in all those details with all the cracks it's generally where your light source is it'll be the opposite side will be where your highlight sits on a crack because you've got to imagine that there's a gap between where the um so there'll be the the gap which is the darker area and then on the edge of say a bone or something like that that bit will be raised up and that's where your highlight will sit but if you're unsure just um grab some reference images or search for some online and I'm sure you'll find some good ones that you can use to help you. So 
So just darkening off that nostril area. So coming back in now with, with obviously the black and sharpening everything up, you can see how much more three-dimensional that nostril now looks. Again, I'm adding more and more detail, more texture. These are more sort of your cracks and that sort of thing. So just really picking them out, all the imperfection in the bone. I'm going back in now and just cleaning up those teeth and pushing back anything that I want to sort of um, taper off to give the illusion that it's in shadow and it makes it look more three-dimensional. I've also switched back to my um, Iwata CMC Plus. Still just using the Trident Black. So a fair amount of reducer, I'd probably say maybe 20% or a bit more than, yeah, I'd say probably more than that actually. Probably 20% to 30% of actual pigment with the rest reducer. So I'm, I'm well over one to one, but I do like to have it flow really nicely. So I like it nice and thin. I'd rather have my paint thin and do numerous coats than you know, try and run with thick paint and have all sorts of spitting and tip drying and all that sort of issue. So, so just working all that in, you can see now it's starting to become a lot more 3D. Just working some shadows under those teeth. Also shaping each individual tooth and then bringing the shadows down off that jaw. Making sure I get underneath the chin guard as well, not forgetting about any areas. Coming back in and really cleaning all this up and then blending the black out onto the actual chin guard area. Just checking all the other sections, making sure I'm happy. And we're pretty much almost done. So just final bits and pieces. And I'm pretty happy with that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And um, now you can see here, this is the completed chin guard with a matte two-pack clear. So thanks again for watching. And We'll see you next time.